Hello out there to you. Let's learn about something called externalities. So, once you identify a building near your house you wish didn't exist, could be any kind of building, could be inhabited, might not be inhabited, why does that building bother you? Okay. Assuming you won the lottery and you were excessively wealthy and you couldn't move, how much would you pay to buy that building from its owner or that piece of property? Okay, so there's probably some kind of value there. Okay, and that value that you're willing to pay captures how much you're actually bothered by that building. Okay, so there's some kind of economic value. Now, if you're only bothered by the pawn shop around the corner, maybe $10, then you're not very bothered very much. But if there's an abandoned building that, um, you know, people congregate that are, uh, maybe not the kind of folks you want to see uh, on a regular basis, and you're willing to pay a million dollars for that property, then you are bothered uh, significantly. Okay, So what we're describing here is, is another market failure. So there's a problem here because uh, costs are being associated, uh, are being created in your neighborhood that are being passed on to you that are not being paid for. <clears throat> Sometimes you're willing to uh, solve those problems, sometimes you're not. These get into legal issues too. Okay, so these are called externalities. They're the extra effects based on production or consumption. In consumption, we mean like usage of, of something. It's got to be outside the direct exchange. So you can see this girl here uh, has been breathing in the pollution. Now she has asthma. She doesn't work at the uh, power plant. She doesn't pay the power bill, but she has been affected by the pollution, right? When I drive my car around uh, Tucson, I pollute the air, not that much, but I pollute the air and other people breathe that in, increases our uh, ozone quality, and or not increases the quality, but increases the pollution levels, okay? Now, externalities can also be positive. You can also want to live near something, so they can also increase the um, uh, effects. Okay. And it's considered a market failure because some cost or benefit is not being fully paid for. So the market is not functioning the way that we want it to. So that's what we call a market failure. Okay. Here's a map of Tucson. Okay. We're going to look for externalities real quick. I'll let you look. Okay. So even if you don't live here, you can recognize there's a freeway here, freeway here. Uh, there's an Air Force base there. These, these tend to be things that uh, cause negative externalities. Uh, some of you know there's a, the, the, Pima, or the city of Tucson jails over here, right? And then there are some positive things that you might want to live near uh, or have a business near. And actually the freeway also kicks up positive externalities, the airport uh, as well. And there's Star Pass Golf Course, Reed Park. There's, there's some places where you can get some positive action um, just by being in proximity that you're not paying for. You're getting benefits beyond your th their exchange, okay? <clears throat> you don't even have to like golf, but if you live really close to Star Pass Country Club or golf course, then you're going to see uh, increased property values. You're going to benefit from being there, okay? Now, here's an economic question. Would you want to live next to the airport? Probably not. Would you want to own a business next to the airport? Yes, actually you would. Uh, lots more traffic is going to be there. Uh, the kinds of people that fly tend to be wealthier, so you have higher incomes, and you have a more inelastic demand. So those folks uh, are rushing. Okay, so they don't have as much time, so they might be willing to pay more. Okay. Uh, normally I show in an in in-person class, so you're probably aware of this. You can find a clips of this. It's very sad. But when we drink uh, water bottles or whatever, it ends up out in the ocean. Okay, and then the fish eat it, and the birds eat it, and then uh, this is negative. There's just so much trash out there, right? So uh, I have a pair of shoes that are made out of that, right? So people are trying to solve this externality, okay? There's, I guess, five of these things floating out there in the ocean. Uh, and so the distance, so this is called the marginal, the marginal social cost, and this is the marginal private cost. So the distance between the two, just like you'll see in the chapter, is the value of the externality, okay? That's the negative externality, okay? So if you had, say, a business on this street and this was happening all the time, that's gonna decrease uh, sales into your uh, neck of the woods there, and so this could this could hurt your property value or your business, okay? This is from picture from England where they have issues with binge drinking, 
Okay, negative externalities from Disneyland. You can, if you've been there, you know there's traffic and there's fireworks every night, right? There's negative externalities. Um, here's a popular question: Is that what's the negative externality associated with smoking? It's not incurred on the smoker. They're just they're just paying the cost of smoking. The negative externality would be the secondhand smoke to anybody else who is not uh, uh, smoking. Right? So if somebody else is impacted by the smoking, then they have uh, uh, experienced a negative externality. Okay? Uh, if you've seen this popular movie, then you know that there's a lot of violence associated with drug sales and drug buying. Okay? So if you buy uh, illegal drugs like cocaine or heroin, you are increasing the negative externalities associated with the drug trade. Right? So one of the things we know is if people just stopped buying drugs as much, there wouldn't be as much profit and there wouldn't be as much reason for violence. Okay, so this is a nice little chart here you can take a look at. So the private cost is what we've been spending our time on, average total costs, all that stuff. And then the external cost, that's the cost to other people. Add those together, we get the social cost. Okay, other examples of negative externalities, air pollution is the uh, popular one, barking dogs, Late night stereo, noise pollution, secondhand smoke, I just said that one. Distracted driving is becoming a problem uh, more and more. Okay, I'm having problems with my PowerPoint there. That's weird. Here come bumbling professor guy. All right, positive externalities, vaccines, because they create herd immunity and uh, decrease the chances of, uh, of that virus being spread, spread around. Research and development creates positive externality. So if uh, a company creates some kind of new process or new product, it can have spillover effects and positive externalities. And then your college attendance makes you um, more educated, higher human capital, it reduces crime, and improves governmental outcomes and the tax base. So there you go. Um, all right, so down here in Tucson, there's, there's here some uh, things that we've been um, sort of uh, trying to solve for a long time. There's a there's a mine that this Rosemont company wants to uh, mine for copper in the Santa Rita's just south of town, uh, and it's been a really a, an externality mitigation problem, right? Trying to decrease the negative externalities on the, the scenic Santa Rita's. Okay, uh, in a lot of college towns like ours, these mini dorms are are they're they're popping up. Hi, um, the housing is expensive near the, the school, so entrepreneurs have come in and built these little little tiny dorms. And uh, as you can probably expect, there's been some uh, negative externalities. So here's this person complaining about this. They said some of the issues he's dealt with being near San Diego State University, trash in the streets. And uh, one occasion he had friends over for dinner and a college student began urinating onto my house. So there you go. Those are some examples of negative and positive external.